So welcome to another Wargame Review from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And I say Wargame Review, this is more of just kind of a, an introduction yeah. to, this is Genesis, um, Ancient Middle East King, oh, Ancient Middle East is what it's called. Ancient. Kingdoms. Empires and Kingdoms of the, of the Ancient Middle, Middle East. Yeah. This is from GMT Games. This is a big game. So we just wanted to give you kind of a first introduction to it. Well, and we just wanted to jump in. Yeah. We jumped in and played one turn, took about hour, hour and a half. Yeah. And, and that was learning rules and moving counters around. And frankly, I hadn't read the rules. Yeah. So it was, you know, it was a good exercise. We just wanted yeah. to play around with it so that when we do kind of sit down and get a big game of it, well, I'm not doing that part of it, not to right. get lost. So. You know, we just wanted to sit down and kind of introduce this game to you and just kind of see, you know, at least our first reactions to certain bits and pieces in some of the game. Um, what we did is, so the playbook, I don't have it here, playbook's in there, yeah. it has a bunch of scenarios. And this game can play from, like, up to five players. One to five. Um, yeah. so there is, like, an introductory solitaire scenario, which is just, that's really just learn the rules in a really small micro game. There's what kingdom do you control in that one? Oh, I don't remember. Okay, I want to say it was I want to say it was Babylon, but I don't know. Okay, but uh, there's a bunch of two-player scenarios. We played one of those, and each of those you can play solitaire as well, very simply. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is outside of the card play, you could play this solo, and you'd have a pretty decent experience. Yeah, there, you know, you have a hand of three cards, which you do keep hidden. And you would miss out on some of the alliances that can form, but you, you could you could make it work, I think. But the reality is, is the more players you have, you can get a five player game that's going. I think you're going to have a good time. If you could get a five player game on this, I I think it would be really fun. Yes, very really long, but it yes. would be very very fun. And this is so it's a point to point movement game, and this is a Pax game. Um, this was made with the same right. system of Pax Romana. Um, Which is another game I'd, I'd like to try. Yes. But it, it has slightly different victory conditions. I was reading the rule book and mm -hmm. um, Richard Berg. Yes, okay. I said the <laughs> right one. Uh, he, he was like, the victory conditions in this are different from Pax mm -hmm. Romana. And there was a, initially kind of like, a, oh, that's weird. Mm -hmm. But I think everyone kind of won over to it because in this game it works. Got what it. you're trying to do is you have your little starting kingdom, which is probably five or six cities... And you're just trying to grow it. And that's how you get victory points. Is how much economic wealth do you control from more and more cities that are connected through trade routes to your capital. Right, right. That's all you're trying to do. You do that through building armies and conquest, sending out um, your kind of peasants and slaves to, to build cities, to control them, fending off barbarian invasions, and just general, you know, what you'd expect from a civilization kind of mm -hmm. war game type thing um so that that's kind of just the goal of it and it, that's it's very simple to say which is nice i like a game where what i'm trying to do is obvious yeah so that yeah. part of it was very approachable um the sequence of play on the play aid cards it's really really good that's about the sequence of play. yeah i thought it was very clear um i was able to kind of read that understand the flow of what a turn would look like mm-hmm and then just reference the rules as we went through. Right. And that was actually a really easy way to learn the game. So I'd yeah. actually probably recommend that. There was a couple of parts where the rules were located in the rule book in a place where I didn't think they would be. Okay, the book, yeah, I remember. Yep. The rule book is mostly chronological through a game turn, but there's a couple, couple parts where it, it's not there. So, like, you can gain slaves when you win a battle. Like, you capture, you capture right. enemy troops, they become slaves. That's not actually... It's not in the section written in the battle section. Right. It's written in the manpower section under the slaves part. Yeah. Because then that part is like, here's how slaves get. You don't get them in this part. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that, there was a, a couple bits in the method that I used to learn this game where I was like, okay, I'll do this. So just understand that. But I was surprised at how easy this game was to learn. Yeah. I, I don't know. I've had this game for a while, sat on a shelf, and I was always terrified to sit and read the rules. But it's actually well. It, it, it looks to be a very big game, very involved. I think it's advertised as like six to twelve hours or yes, something. It can be a long one, but I was impressed at how how approachable it was. Yeah. Holly. <laughs> so, we we have a fellow. No, no, no. Okay. 
I'm just gonna let him be. You can hear his humming, that's fine. So, this one, I, I wanna play it with lots of people. Yeah. I've read yeah. a few things about this though. So, um, when you play with all the factions, it's the game isn't like everyone's got an equal chance. Yeah. This is a historical simulation. So there are some factions, um, like the Mitanni faction, where they ha they kind of got they're in the middle of everyone. Well, I mean, you can see by the map they can be attacked literally on every side. And and I think the Canaanites might be in a similar type of position as well. They they've got they got to worry about a few different things as right. well. So the map is fascinating. Um, it's point to point, so you've got everything's a different type of city. There's a few transit spaces. Everything's connected by lines, and then there's like mountains. So yeah. really, there's yeah. not. That's it though. There's not a ton of like overly complex exceptions on the map. Well, movement was very simple. I thought yeah. movement was a very simple kind of a neat process. You roll a six sider, and that's how many spaces you can move. So yeah. that was kind of interesting. But and if you've got your king with you, he adds yeah. his little tac you know, his tactics rating. Movement. Or yep. So it's it's easy to move your pieces around and see what you you know can and should do. Mm -hmm. Whilst there is, it looks like there's a lot of cities on the board. The routes are very defined. A lot right. of it is this is connected in a line. This is connected in a line. So you know you've got one or two choices to make. Yep. Um, so you're not sat there analyzing the board of how do I get to where I want to go? What's the easiest way to do? Mm -hmm. a, a lot of it is let's just charge down here and do it. Right. Um, so you, you only, and it's picking where you want to fight your battles, and so it's also easier to defend yourself as well, because mm -hmm. you can say, if I can get to this point, I can strategically defend because they might right. have to come this way. R right. Like for instance, this is a choke point, whatever that is. Dur. I'm not going to say the rest. The of names it. in this one is yeah. not going to be a problem. But I mean, that's a choke point. You really can't get at me without coming through that area. So I put what nine strength points there. And you know, but if you lose, if you lose choke point. You might be in a bad spot. Well, because then there's nothing else behind right. it. Right. And, and it was interesting. You talked about the roots. You know, knowing the victory conditions, I was kind of looking on the map, trying to understand, okay, I want to be taking over cities that are too... Is it economic? Yes, the economic worth. Economic worth. You know, there's some cities that are one. You know, I took that because it's a choke point. But I was looking, you know, there's a two, there's a two, and boom, there's a four. So yeah. my, my plan was to... Start moving in this direction. So I, I thought that was cool. It's kind of clear what your objective should be. Um, I, I thought that was neat. The way they represented those economic worth points on the board, I thought was very cool. Yes. Um, you have, the, and a big part of this game is it's that economy, right? All right. Because the more of those um, cities that you control have economic worth, the more income that you'll generate for your treasury, yep. which means the more stuff you can do on your subsequent turn. Do you generate more income from mountains? I don't think we... No, they, they what were, about ore and gold? Um, I think this, it might be worth something. We didn't get there because that right. was Right, we didn't get away. that far. But it's the, the economic wealth it's is... It's three because of that. Yes. Okay. So mm -hmm. anything that doesn't have anything is worthless. Got it's it. It's more of that right. strategic positioning. Yeah. But you're trying to... Do that, gain money, and then the more money you have, the more stuff you can do, yeah. the more money you'll need to defend your larger kingdom right. as well. So there's a lot of really cool growth and economic development in this one, which was enjoyable to yeah. play. And once I'm going to come back to it. I was surprised at how easy it was to learn. Yeah, I, I was very intimidated by this one. And in yeah. fact, every time we got together, I'm like, hey, when are we going to play Genesis? And then and in the back of my, my, yeah, the back of my mind, I'm like, I don't really want to play Genesis because I know it's going to be very complex. This was very approachable. Yeah. I, I was surprised. Yes. And it's I a, was very, surprised. a very positive thing. So I, I had a good time with that. Yeah. The, the combat in this one is very cool. Yeah, the, the, the percentage losses and the... The shifts are very interesting. That's kind of the most, almost in-depth part. That part of the rule book is actually yeah. very long because it's very detailed. Mm -hmm. and it's But it's very clear. There was no part of that four pages of combat explanation where I was confused. Right, it was I, pretty laid out. They did a really good job. Because it can be a little complex. Um, you have to consult a few different bits and pieces. Yeah. So you have this huge chart. And this is basically, it's odds-based combat, kind of. Yeah. You don't... So in this one, you have a stack. You have nine power, I have six power. Right. You don't reduce that to a three-to-one fraction. Right. That's really important, because the you do an X, y, intercept. men that you have mm -hmm. 
will determine how bloody the combat is as yeah. well. And yeah. I, I love a game that does that. They yeah. account for not just the odds, but literally the volume of, of men in the combat. Because the more men there are, the more people will die. You can right. just reduce it to that and have like, it's a one or, you know. Yeah. So here, you basically consult this chart with literally how many guys are in the combat. Right. Or how much combat. Well, you do an X, Y intercept, right? Yes. X is the, the left axis where you, I have nine guys and you have six guys. So you you meet at that point. It tells you, yeah. oh, you have two shifts or anyway, whatever. Anyway, from like zero down here to like 40. <laughs> <laughs> that would be 40 guys to one. That's like four. I don't know wow. if you would ever. Why would you even? I mean, I would run away. The shifts are almost meaningless. At yeah, that right. Because <laughs> this gives you shifts. And they're yeah. called shifts, but it's not column shifts. Right. That's something important. Kind of is, but not really. It kind of is, yeah. So, you basically, you do this. You This is how many kind of base shifts that combat's going to have. Right. Now, there's also some other shifts from having leaders. Leaders or... As, yeah, tactical value. Yep. Um, if you're in certain types of... Um, yeah, if you, so if you have chariots... Mm -hmm. And if your chariots are better than the other guys, you get extra shit. We never got to chariots. We yeah. hadn't developed those technologies yet. If you're defending in a mountain, mm -hmm. easy to defend, you gain a shift. And there's some extra there's some extra units, like uh, Sheridan and Sea People's units. Which come through events. I think those might be like mercenary style units. Right. They Those give you extra shifts because they're excellent fighters. Um, and basically, you kind of net the shifts, and whoever had the most... They gain that net difference. Right. And the shifts are basically modifications to the dice. Mm -hmm. So you basically roll a d6 each, uh, roll two, and you roll one. Fantastic. Great. And then whoever whoever had the mo the shifts, so let's say you ended up with two shifts, right. for example. Two net shifts. You yes. might have had... You, I might have had three. You might have had one. Yeah. So the net is two. The net is two. And, and whoever had the most, you get to do right. the shifts. Right. And basically the shifts are adjusting... The rolled dice. Mm -hmm. You can adjust your own dice, or you can adjust the opponent's dice, right. which is also very interesting as well. Yeah. And a lot of choices to be made there and how that's going to affect the outcome of the combat. Because you then look at this table on the back, which the is percentage your percentage loss, loss chart. And again, we're going to go back to the number of guys in the back. Mm -hmm. It is important how many guys you have and are fighting with. Yeah. So if you had 10 guys in the battle, right. you rolled a 1... You're going to inflict one loss. Ten percent losses. Yeah, it's yeah. this is this is a percentage loss. In, es well, in essence, yeah. So you might say, well, I'm going to use my two shifts to change my one to a two and then to a three. Yep. That's your two battle die roll shifts. So that moves this ten instead of on the ten percent. You're now on the thirty percent. Well, you're going to do three yep. losses. So he's going to inflict three losses on me. Let's say, how many did I have in the combat? I had, let's say I've got six guys. Mm -hmm. I have six guys, I consult the six table, I rolled a two, that ends up as only one loss. So you're going to do three losses to me, I'm going to do one to you. All right. But you get certain situations where you might roll like a one, right. and I roll a six. And that happened That's one time. great for me. So now my little six guys, I roll a six, I'm going to do four losses to you. Yep. You might still have those shifts, mm -hmm. so you might then say, I'm going to reduce my die down to a four, Which keep your little one. Reduces a loss. So now I'm only going to do two losses mm. to you, and you'll do one loss to me. Yeah. So again, really interesting how you apply your shifts in this game. Yeah. And going and, through that combat was very, very interesting. And it wasn't really overly complex. Once you got it down, it's like... You know, calculate the difference, roll a die, consult this chart. Yes. It's it's very simple. It's a little involved, but it's not really complex. But it was involved the first time. It, it was. That's what I'm saying. Until yeah. you got it, until we got it down. And how many battles did we do? Three? I think we did three. three and really, battles. the first one, we were like, how do we do combat? Yeah. And it took a while. Yeah. And then, but the second time, it was like, boop, boop, boop. It's, it's, yeah. Again, it was really simple. Mm -hmm. it, you'd learn it once. It, to me, it was very easy to retain yeah, that. Yeah, I agree. And just to like do... Because you're probably actually going to do quite a few combats in this game, I feel right. like. We're fairly aggressive, but if you... Well, we were a, aggressive because we, we just wanted we to, to learn it. it. But if you have a bunch of guys... Yeah. You know, you get you, out and you're going to be getting attacked and encroached, so you might be doing a lot a of that. Another interesting thing about combat in relation to the... What is it? Your manpower limit? Yes. You know, you can recruit units above your manpower limit... 
Like my manpower limit was an 18. I think at one point I had 21 guys. And you don't count your slaves or your peasants. Yeah. You know, I, I, I would lose those guys at the beginning of my next manpower phase on the next turn. So it's like, I better get out and attack with those. Yeah, you might as well use them. because Might as well use them to gain something. Yeah, so that was interesting as well. And that happened because of an event. I think I pulled Plague, where I went from 20 to 18. Yeah. So that immediately put the onus on me to get out there, yeah, you've got do guys. something, or you're just going to lose three guys. So that was kind of cool. I think there's a lot of neat elements in the management of your civilization. It's not just battle. It's yeah. not just worrying about the economic points. It's worrying about your population. Most of the actions that are building related, like monuments or defenses or building cities, you have to have slaves or peasants. Yeah, to actually build this. And that's cool. So you got to manage those. I, just a lot of neat little things that you know. There's money. You have to you have to spend money to take yeah. actions and gain cards. And, and your money, I felt like that was quite tight. There were times where I was like. Well, and you built a city, like yeah. I think the first turn, that cost five. Yes. We had 14 to start or something. So I remember when you did that, I was like, well, I want to do that, but I'm glad I didn't. Yeah. Because that gave me more flexibility to buy units, more mm -hmm. units. And so that it's, it's a trade-off. Yes. But you built that city for protection. You built that city also to try to put some pressure on me. Yes. And kind of create a border. The, yeah. the other part that I really liked um, kind of along with that. It is how you activate. Because you kind of yeah. tried to attack one of my cities. The walls kind of got damaged. And I was like, oh, well, hopefully yeah. I, I might repair my walls before you attack again. And I, I drew another. Spot. Yep. Yes. And that's because this game is a chip pull activation system. Mm -hmm. um, each each faction has a bunch of um, activation markers. and the I think you have four, right? Isn't it four? Yeah, I want to say it's four. But basically mm -hmm. what happens is... is there's like a little initiative round, mm -hmm. and whoever wins the initiative, um, they will go first. Right. So you put your first... How was that one? Was it a roll? I don't remember what the I want to say it. it was the strategic... It's the strategic value on your king. On the king, yeah. I want to say it was... I think it was... Mine that. was a three, you yours was most, a one, yeah. so I got initiative. And you can actually use the initiative and say... You're going first. Yeah, the initiative. Which is interesting. You can decide who goes first. Right. You can decide who does a lot of things, which I think is really cool. But what happens at the first round is the person with the initiative says, um, you know, Egypt, you're going to go first. Mm -hmm. So the Egypt player puts one of their markers, there's a little track over here, they put theirs on. And then everyone in clockwise order then puts right. one down. Everyone else... Like, all, if each other player has three other chits, all of those get put into the cup. Mm -hmm. So you start with kind of a regulated order for the first five activations. Everyone gets to do something. Yeah, everybody doesn't... And then you you're not the forced to pull, sit, yeah. Which is like, you know, usual chip pull activations. Which having three chits in there, I, I went, I think, two times in a row. Yes. And that was very key for what I yeah, tried to do. Because you, you could not repair yeah. the defense uh, defensive walls. Is that newsy? Yeah. I was probably a butchering of the name, but yeah. yeah. I was hoping to pull my chip so I could repair my walls, put a guy in there for defense. Didn't happen. And so it, it led to me kind of easily taking it over the next round. Yeah, and that's a big swing of victory points. That's a hometown, yeah. so I can't recruit there. If I couldn't make it But that, that was an interesting, the element of those drawn from the cup action markers. I think that's very cool. It adds some chaos. It adds some uncertainty. It also adds some strategic advantage. If you keep drawing your chit... Now you got to remember though. But then, then at the scary. end, you're not going to have any activations, well, and everybody's going to have a free for all on you, right? And when you play a multiplayer game, oh, that you've would got, be bad. You've got two armies who yeah. got a bunch of activations. They're like, "Sweet, let's go for it!" Boom, right for the picking. So, so going first isn't always the best having, unless you know exactly what you want to do. Yeah, or well, having the initiative is very, very important, important because you could yeah. choose at least for that first round who how starts. that's going to play out. So. If you need to set yourself up in yep. defensive posture, you can do that. Yep. Or launch a key kind of first strike, you can do that. So that was a really neat part of it. Uh, one thing I actually really liked about this one was the presentation. I thought it was a really good looking game. Yeah, it is. It's a great looking map. The cards are really cool. It looked like an old kind of a scroll. Well, and I think each of the countries, each of the civilization's units look different. I believe that is the case. Right. Yes. Yeah, they are different. So these look like Babylonians. They have their, their certain style of hats on. I, that, that was a really nice touch. 
yeah. definitely something that made the game more enjoyable. I like the colors too. They stand out. Yeah, it's nice and easy to, to distinguish yeah. who's what and what's going on. Each card, each faction has their own little kingdom display where you're tracking your own income, manpower. Technology. There's little army boxes to reduce yep. clutter on the board as well. Chariot technology. Yeah, and control and, and the other interesting thing about the game overall is your army sizes and your units are going to be limited by your manpower. Yes. So it's it's like you've got to also invest in your manpower going up. Yes. And and that's interesting. It's just I, there's a lot of economic aspects. There's some militaristic aspects, I, and then there's some resource management. You know, do you really need more cards? I'm not going to pay this turn, but then you can't activate, right? right? So it's I, I don't know. Lots of really neat elements. Would love to play a full game of this. Yes, even a full two player game, which I think is three turns. Yeah, we do two full more turns, and th this is a long one. So that's, yeah, that's the only part of that, right? Yeah, we this play, game would a uh, three. Turn game is going to take you about three and a half hours, would be my guess. Yeah, and that's what it says in the book. Yeah, playbook. maybe four. Um, the cards are really cool. You got you can hold up to three of them. They're just cool events. Do this thing, do that thing. Some There's of the some events, bad stuff. Some of the events are you draw it and that bad stuff happens. Yep. So I drew a you plague. Had a plague. You had I rolled a d6, and then I had to eliminate a certain amount of civilians. Yeah. And then you could you killed one of my civilians. Right. One time. There was a rebellion where every city was going to have to roll. Yeah, lots of neat little elements. But yeah, I, I, but hit, so here's the thing. I really enjoyed this. We want to play a big full game of this. Yeah. But we'll play more of it to kind of show you a bit more detail in the game at least and get a better understanding. But I was a surprised at how approachable the game yeah. was. That's one thing I was very D impressed don't with. Don't be scared away by this. No. This is not one of those games that you're going to open. It's going to take you a, a month to read the rules and understand it. Yes. You're going to have to play three games before you really... I think you're going to have to play three games to understand the finer points. Maybe. But definitely the concepts are fairly standard for war gamers. I think you're going to pick it up. It's point-to-point -point movement, which I always think is a little simpler. Um, yes. I, I don't know. Just I think this is a very approachable, very playable game. And it's a cool part of history that we've never played before. No. We don't do much Ancients, and this no. is one that I'm like... This may kickstart us in I know. doing some more of that. <laughs> but this yeah, is very it's, interesting. It's, like I said, I want to play Sword of Rome. I want to play Pax Romana. Those are games that I want to play now. Yes. So I'm going to go out and try to find a copy of Pax Romana right now. Well, right now. Well, when I get home. Let's go. So <laughs> that was just kind of first thoughts and a little bit of an introduction to Genesis, yep. Empires and Kingdoms of the Ancient Middle East. Um, you'll probably see more from this game coming from us later on. But we just sat down and played with this for a couple hours, just kind of explore a little bit and learn it. I had a great time. Definitely want to play a lot more of this one. Absolutely. So if you're interested, go pick this up. It's a, kind of an older game. I say older. It's been out 2015. for three years. And now. I was surprised by that. I, I made the comment, I thought this was a little older than even that. Yeah. It's only a three-year-old game. But yeah, so. it's, it's, a, it's a really cool product. Yeah. And you get a ton in it. There's... Play cards for each player. So there's, there's two. You have like a normal yeah. one with actions and seeing the player. Then it's like a whole battle one. But there's five copies of each for each player. I like it when a game decks you out like that. Yeah. I think that's really important for a big game like this to keep it moving along. Everyone's kind of looking at what they're going to be doing on their turn. Cards are really cool, very simple. Yeah, good art on the back. There's like three or four counter sheets to punch. Mm -hmm. There was a lot to punch. Um, so that's, that's and it looks so good. A bunch of it bangs. looks so good clipped. But yeah, it's getting it all out and getting this played with a bunch of players. That's kind of my next goal. Yeah, is to get a bunch of us together and do this one. So yeah. appreciate you guys tuning in. That was our look at Genesis. Just an introduction. You'll see more of this coming soon. Um, we've been the players8.com. Thanks.